Hey there, welcome to our channel. Let's continue with our episode. So in the previous episode, we have seen how we can test our payment and we have placed uh, a couple of orders and we have seen the order is going through, right? It is successfully able to change the order status right after successful payment collection, right? And everything is happening with the help of Kafka events. And now our purpose is served. All the microservices are working well. Now let's try to hook it up with our the missing pieces that is we have already discussed that is called Elasticsearch. So in this lecture, we are going to deep dive on Elasticsearch part where we will try to understand how Elasticsearch is work and what is the core mechanism. And uh, finally, we're going to put our hands on writing some code to, to integrate Elasticsearch with our catalog microservice. Maybe some of you already know about the Elasticsearch, but still I just wanna give you a kind of complete idea because uh, maybe, uh, maybe some new viewers are there whoever don't have any kind of knowledge or maybe uh, maybe idea about the elastic source. So this is the way maybe it's going to help you everyone to make sure like we are on the same page, right? So what is elastic source? So if you are thinking about the elastic source, it's just like a Google. As you go to the google.com and you are searching for some data, like as an example, some places. So it is it is giving you instantly the, the places name, all right? Some places name, maybe it's matched by different part of the world, right? And the similar way, just like when you are looking for some images, then it is going, going to give you like bunch of all the related images. The similar way you can think of like elastic charts is just like, you know, uh, like Google. It is searching some data from your database by matching different criteria, right? Or maybe you can think of it like, you know, a, a digital library as an example. So you have a kind of uh, books or maybe a library right there. And that particular library can have a different type of data. It, it can be have a kind of maybe book related to computer science or maybe uh, maybe designing or maybe some other products, all right? So what you can do, you can just like go to that the, that uh, that particular library, right? Digital library, you can just search for any, any name of that book, right? And this is the way uh, it's going to give you a search for that, that book and it's going to give you the response. But behind the scene, how it works, right? Because that particular library has to be organized such a way so as soon as you are putting the name of like uh, the title of the author or maybe title of the book or maybe author name or what kind of topic you are looking for. Everything has to be searched quickly, right? So there are multiple combination of uh, the, the search criteria we need to add it, right? And this is, if you are going to introduce these things from your database, then what you need to do? You need to write some queries. Just like, you know, um, go to that, the, the, let's say library, right? Maybe book or whatever, searching for book name by this or author like this or maybe topic like this. So there are like multiple complex query you need to run, then you can you can get the result. But you can imagine this kind of complex query if you are going to perform in your database where you have a millions of data are exist in your database, then how much time it's going to take. You cannot measure like how much time it's going to take. It depends on data size, it depends on bandwidth and etc. right? And eventually if this is going to give you some data also, it's going to be really costly for you. So that is what Elasticsearch is doing. It is easing our pain to finding all of the data by writing some complex query. So instead of that, what it is it is doing, it is like you know, using some kind of inverted index, just like a, a back of a book is showing the word of the pages or something like that. It's just like you know, arranging all of this data for us using full textures behind the scene. And uh, you can search the data by uh, by typing anything, like just like you know title, maybe you can put category or maybe you can put description contains this, something like that. So this is really a beautiful library. You can say it's a, where it comes to the e-commerce application, then definitely Elasticsearch is like, you know, uh, helping us a lot or maybe uh, making faster for sourcing any kind of like, you know, uh, the products and items, right? So what is the core concept of the Elasticsearch? Let's try to understand in simple term. So Elasticsearch uses some kind of document concept. A, you can say a single data item, just like in a session format or similar, you can apply just like a, um, a page of a book, right? And it is using index. So just like it, uh, one book can have its contents, like each and every pages, we can go directly to that, that particular index. Or maybe you can think of it just like dictionary we have, and each dictionary has certain letters. You can imagine, let's say you need to find the word payment, then you need to go to letter P, and you can just like you know, find out that particular uh, word right there. And similar way, it is, it is using some kind of smart, uh, the, the indexing technique. Uh, you can say a collection of documents, all right? you can just refer to a kind of bookshelf or maybe a category of, of certain certain stuff. And it is using fields 
And a PILS is the kind of property of, uh, of documents, just like your Zeshan document, it has a lot of properties, right? It's a name. By those properties, you can find that particular documents. Uh, as an example, you are finding out one product, then you can put the product name or maybe category, right? Or you can put the description, let's say the product is, it's vegan or maybe something like that, right? So you can find it out like that way. And it is using the source mechanism that the, uh, it's a kind of, as I said, it's a smart source, which is under the hood, it is using the deep full text source, right? Just like, you know, and the Google does, or maybe uh, it is it is going through, looking through each and every document, right? Because all of the documents are, are well structured and it is already pre-indexed, right? Using certain, uh, certain keywords, right? So that is the way it is sourcing the documents and it is giving the result for us, right? So in our case, how we are going to use that particular feature? So you can see like, you know, we are, while our customer will come to our catalog microservice, then it is it is directly reaching right now, if we are not using the Elasticsearch, what it is going to do? It is directly reaching to the database and it is just to try to patch it out. Let's try to introduce one database right here, just to try to make sure like we are, we are understanding this concept uh, clearly, right? This is our DB, let's say. And this DB is belongs to whom? Its DB is belongs to our catalog service, let's say. Our catalog service. So now what it's going to do, like while we need some data, right? Let's try to make it like this way. Maybe it's going to be con convenient right now. So while we are going to store some data from our catalog service, then what it's it's going to do? Let's let's assume we don't have this feature at all, right? We don't have this one, right? Then it's directly sourced from, from our database, right? So as soon as our product size or the size of the database will grow, then our stars will become slow. No matter what kind of algorithm you are going to uh, use, but as the, based on the data size and everything, it is always going to perform accordingly, right? So huge numbers of data, that means cost to the, the sourcing like and latency. So that, that is the way it's, it's working. So that's why Elasticsearch is what it's going to do. As soon as we are going to create any kind of like, you know, item to the database, then we'll be going to create one index right there in the Elasticsearch as well. So let's try to understand this scenario in, in, in a wider way so we can have a clear picture right before writing the codes, right? So let's try to copy all of these th three services, three diagrams from here. Let's see. And all the way down right here, I'm gonna add all of these things here. So this is going to be a request, let's say, uh, this can, we can say like, you know, maybe uh, vendor request, let's say. Right, vendor request. So vendor in terms of like our, our seller, whoever going to uh, handle the, our, our product entries, all of these things we are, we are going to uh, give the responsibility to vendor. They can, they can add, create and update anything they can do. So let's try to accommodate like this way. So right now, right now our catalog service will going to be uh, access to our database, let's say from here. So this one will be going to like this way. And now our catalog service, right? it will going to connect to Elasticsearch as well as, right? So by, by calling certain uh, port, right? So that is also we are going to expose in our code. So now, every time we are going to create a product, right? Let's try to assume we are going to create one product, let's say here. So these are few CRUD operations it's going to happen from our catalog microservice, right? This is mandatory because once we are going to create the product, all right? Then what it's going to do, like it's going to store in where? It's, it, it's going to store in our database. What it's going to do, like you know, once we are going to create the product, then database, we are, we are going to store in the database. Then this particular response where it will go, like once the data is, has been uh, the created, then it will going to give the response back to our, our catalog service, right? So let's try to keep it this side. Because, because while we're going to store the data, then we need the response of that particular data where, where this data has been stored. It, it can be stored in anywhere, like you know, maybe, uh, maybe in a table, uh, in any places, right? But it is always going to maintain some kind of like index, just like, you know, if you can say in our in the database table, this is going to be a table just like this. Once this product will be created, then our database will be returned back that particular response. Let's say, hey, this is the product product ID and product name, right? I product ID number one and product name is iPhone. Then as soon as catalog service will create this product, then what it's going to do, it's going to create an index right here as well as, right? So this is going to be, let's say, create, create product. 
and it is going to give the response of the ID and name, let's say, right? Then, so in the elastic source, it is going to create one index, right? So, and it is going to put that particular index right there. Let's say we're going to add one, uh, one session document, let's say, right? So let's try to change it to and this is the way we are going to store the data in the elastic shell. so as soon as we are creating the data in our catalog service first of all we are going to store in our database then as uh, right after receiving that particular uh, response from our database then we will be going to create the similar thing in the elastic shards also which is called we are going to indexing that particular data now let's try to uh, follow the update technique. The similar applies for the update as well as. So as soon as we are going to update, right? Then the similar technique we are going to follow, like uh, because those data, some of the attributes, maybe let's say we are we are sending the stock as well as here, stock as well as, right? So in this case, the stock also has to be updated in the right after right right after these attributes, right? Right? Stock stock will be let's say ten, right? Earlier let's say it was one, then now we are going to update the stock uh, ten. Then while we are going to update the particular stock, because already while we are, we have, we are indexing that particular uh, product item, then we have the ID exists right there. So this ID we are going to use on, on the time of the update, then Elastic Shards will get to know like, yes, this ID we need to update. Let's try to update that particular data and we are going to update the stock of 10, right? So the object will be a little bit complex than this one, but I don't want to make it complicated just for uh, for in the beginning phase. So in the slowly, while we're going to put our hands on the coding, then you will understand the complete scenario, right? So now you can see like, while we're going to perform any kind of crowd operation, then definitely we will be going to, uh, uh, we will be going to update the data and index accordingly. It, it can be updated or it can be deleted, then we'll be going to delete that particular index or data from the right there. But what about the read? Let's try to understand the read mechanism also. That this is also really a important topic for us, right? So let's try to keep it here, right? Maybe maybe I'm gonna keep it here, right? So while it's going to be read, right? Read product data, let's say from here. This is again a kind of different connection. Right now, while we're sourcing the data, it is not going to read from the database itself. What it's going to do, it is directly going to read from our elastic source. Let's try to make it like this way. And elastic shares, what we will be going to do, we will be going to source by, let's say, these are the data, whatever we are sourcing that particular keyword, that is, we are directly uh, sending over to the elastic source. Then it's elastic source duty to where exactly this phone keyword is exist in the title, or, or maybe name, all right? It can be maybe name, maybe name, right? Or maybe in the category, wherever, if the, in the category, it, it, it has exist some keyword just like mobile, then find it out all of the documents for us. Then as soon as we are sending this data to Elasticsearch, then it is going to give us back to the, all the data. Then what we are going to do, we'll, we'll be going to like, you know, uh, giving this to um, the here, right? Let's try to keep it like this. And again, it will give, it'll give us back to the, um, the catalog service so it can be respond to our, our client, right? So accordingly, it's going to read the data. But what if, like in every time, it, it's not necessary like maybe Elasticsearch will have or maybe it's going to store the data. But 99% cases like we'll be going to store, make sure like all the data are updated right there in Elasticsearch and it has to read the data from there. But here's the thing, many times Elasticsearch data, it's not be able to uh, update in, in frequently by let's say if you're going to use some uh, inventory service or maybe such kind of mechanism, then what we're going to do, we'll be going to read the data from uh, all the data details from there, but the, the sensitive information just like in a stock, availability, everything we're going to read from the other sources while it comes to the product detail. Because while we are going to read the product uh, by ID, then definitely those data we are going to read from our database. So make sure like we are always using the updated data just like in a stock or sensitive information reading from there. So we have a kind of solid understanding right there. But it's always good practice while we are updating the data, make sure like you are updating always in Elasticsearch. So there should not supposed to be a data discrepancy right there, right? So this is also a kind of very good practice. So moral of this story is like, while we are going to create the data or update the data or delete the data from the catalog service, we will be going to perform the same operations in Elasticsearch also, which is not maybe sync, right? It may be asynchronously. So our data has to be always synced from our DB to the Elasticsearch. So, and while it comes to reading the data, then we'll be directly handing over this functionality to the Elasticsearch, then Elasticsearch will give the data back to, do, to our uh, catalog service so it can be respond to our front end. And 
there is a kind of fallback mechanism also we are going to uh, we use right here, which is gonna be if the data doesn't exist in Elasticsearch, then read from the DB. So definitely this is going to be a very rare condition. As I said, in 99% uh, use cases, we will be going to read from the Elasticsearch. But what if, like if our Elasticsearch is down, then we need to accommodate it to the customer, right? So that's why those features also, we need to keep it in our database side. So now you understand like why Elasticsearch is necessary and how Elasticsearch is gonna work with our microservice ecosystem, right? So in the next lecture, let's try to put our hands on the writing the code. Um, uh, I know there are a lot of like in a boring lecture I have just represented here, but I hope like this lecture and this uh, the explanation helps you out to why we need to use Elasticsearch and how it's going to be implemented in our microservice, right? Then see you right there where we'll be going to write a lot of code to integrate our Elasticsearch. Thank you.